What I'm trying to figure out now is I think it, it's going to be easier to separately define the inline policy. But specifically what I want to do is I want to only allow running this one step function, this one state machine. So I want to pass in the ARN, but it doesn't like it because the ARN is, a, is an output, which is something that's going to be arrived at when it actually does the deploy. So you don't know it in advance. Um, and so that's why it's wrapped in this type. So what I need to figure out is how to uh, reference that in something that's expecting, you know, a list of strings. So, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to look through the docs and see if I can spot how that is supposed to be done. So if I look at role inline policy here, main policy, cool. Let's take a look at what's that. Can we look at role policy? Line policy. We suggest using explicit JSON encoding or AWS IAM get policy document when assigning a value to policy. Okay, get policy document, huh? I suppose there's an example of that in here. Okay. Uh, let's see. I filter for ah, get policy document. What does that look like? ABS I am get policy documents. Um, then we can we can call that and get the JSON when creating the policy. Okay. So let's try try this. Oh, that's that's what literally what I'm doing right now. Okay, great, super. So how do I pass a resource? Uh, like an output from a resource into the, the skip policy document. Like all this stuff is hard coded or they're using star, right? And you don't want to do that, probably. So how do you properly provide the, the ARN? Source I am get policy document again star. It's wrong. Uh, like something like this basically says that you can do this action on everything in the target AWS account. And maybe that's something you want to do. Like here's an example. Like this is get object resource star. That means for every S3 bucket that exists, you are able to get every object. Of within that the, the account has access to in general. I mean, you probably don't want to do that. Um, there is probably some other document uh, in their documentation that explains how to use this in this this way. So they're not bothering to show that here. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know. Uh, let's try how to guides. Okay. Um, step functions. I actually, I want to look at that and see if they have better stuff. Um, stack reference architecture could be interesting. Um, stack reference example. What is this? What do, what do you mean by stack reference? general docs concepts that's probably a good place to be resource uh, inputs and outputs I think this is probably like at the stack level isn't it oh no 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 uh, password password that results 
outputs. All resources, all resources created by Volumi um, will have properties which are returned from the Cloud Provider API. These are called outputs. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, actual plain values are not immediately available. Um, the Cloud Development Kit, which is the thing that I've used that's somewhat similar to this, has a similar kind of concept. If you need to access and interact with the output's plain value, you can do using one of the following options apply. Okay. I don't think I can do that though. It goes and apply. Um, that doesn't change anything, right? That still gives me an output. Look at the definition of a policy document. Cards, options, invoke options, promise. Okay, so that that does not get me any closer. Let me um, arn output policy. Accessing single outputs with apply. Oh, hey, is this taking me? Is it? I just need an example. What is this supposed to look like? So we wrap the whole thing in the apply. Can we do this then? And there. Okay, so now inline policy is an output of a get policy document result. Okay. And then that gets passed here that uh let me just pass it no, that's not the right type um can we I mean, this is the policy document so the inline policy needs some other stuff Okay, it seems to be happy with that, All right? So we're, we're we're using this JSON property. This is, I think, what it was talking about here when it was saying uh, about lifting. Deeply nested properties is using lifting. Lifting allows you to access properties and elements directly from the output itself without needing apply. This gives us an output of a string from the inline policy. Uh, so maybe this works. Let's try, let me local up again. See if that works. So um, this, if we can get this deployed, this is gonna have S3 connected to Lambda connected to step function, at least in term, terms of permissions. And the actual connection will exist between uh, yeah, let's do that. Between uh, S3 and Lambda, the next step will be to modify our Rust Lambda to invoke uh, the set function. Uh, and that's where we're going to need the, uh, the uh, 
ADBS SDK. Literally great would be just like a link to the crate. So interesting. I'm surprised that what version are we on? One dot forty. So, uh, the Lambda name changed, that's fine. That's the, the Palumi name, not the actual name of the Lambda, which is just my function. So all that stuff got deployed, uh, which is great. So um, I do want to test the S3 to um, Lambda portion of that. So we'll do that in a second. But there was something else that I was thinking about. Oh, right, right, right. So uh, crates. IO. Let's go find these AWS SDK thingies. Uh, all time downloads. Yeah. Okay. So is there one for step functions? search for step function. Uh, nope, okay, SFN. Aha, AWS SDK SFN. That's what I'm after. <laughs> uh, okay, back to here, try to go add that. Uh, and there was a AWS config was I think a thing that was also listed there. That gets us the things that we're going to need in order to be able to uh, to be able to call the AWS A API to um, you know start our step function. And the other thing that we will need to do is pass the ARN of the step function to the lambda so that it can knows what step function to call uh, like that. <laughs> I'm not going to deploy that yet. Let's see if we can test all this out in, uh, in local stack. So let's go back to S3. Yeah, there's our bucket. And uh, I'm going to upload a file. file will do. Let me grab uh, one of these ones. Yeah, files here. All right, so we have a file. Now, what should have happened as soon as that object was created is that our Lambda was executed. Let's go over Lambda. Let me see that. Logs. There it is. Uh, right then, right now. Start received event. Okay, there we go. Cool. So we can see, hey, we got the bucket and the name of the um, file somewhere is in here. There we go. Key. Some context. So yeah, there we go. So we can we can see the lambda was invoked when the file was uploaded, and that that's kind of what I'm after right now. Um, and then the next step is to make the Lambda then run our step function. Um, so I don't actually need any output here. So I'm going to get rid of this. And this is just going to be a unit return type. Um, there we go. And then what I want to do is I want to run the step function. And I have no idea how to do that. Let's check the docs here. Um, let's 
So use AWS SDK SFN as SFN. Then we, right. Um, in here, we're going to construct the client. We're going to get the config. Huh. What's the best way of doing this? Like if I wanted to build up, so this function should be invoked every time we invoke the Lambda. But this function is invoked when the container hosting the Lambda is started. Um, so you'll, you'll hear, hear people talk about Lambda functions and there's like a, a, a cold start and a warm start. Really what it is, is there's a container that is started up uh, when the Lambda is needed. And then inside of the container is the actual function that is then invoked. And then there's a period of time in which the container still exists and subsequent invocations of the Lambda function We'll take advantage of the warmed container to run the function again, which means you can do things like instantiate a connection to a database or set up something that is reusable. And if the, if the container is still warm, those resources can be reused. Um, so what I'm thinking about is can we reuse this client and where would we create it and how would we pass the reference to it into the function? And I, I don't have an answer for that for right now. So I think for right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do this all here. And uh, then I'm going to say, hey, let's run uh, the step function. No input. Um, we're just gonna, we're gonna do this the, the simplest way. So we're gonna grab uh, environment variable, state machine arm, which I think is what we set. And, uh, our infrastructure code and we're gonna do this and maybe this works it doesn't like this um, because input is supposed to be taking a string two because we don't actually use response, which is fair, but we can we can we can print response. There we go. Alright, so this oh deprecated. Uh use AWS config load defaults function. Seems good. Uh it takes one argument. Version, behavior version, uh convenience wrapper equivalent to AWS config defaults. Yada, 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 yada. Um, interesting. Let's look at the docs. Oh, uh, it's not Rust specific. Okay, let's go back to crates. Yeah, AWS config. So essentially what I want to do in the Lambda is that the Lambda will be provided with like environment variables, details that the SDK should be able to pick up on to figure out how to associate itself with the role um, that has all the permissions associated with it. So that this client that we're instantiating will have the ability to call the AWS um, API to invoke the step function, to start the step function. Um, so if I still have the, uh, here we go. Tutorial. 
look at their example here. So here's the here's what they're providing as an example in the current docs for SDK for Rust. Region provider. So we tried to figure out what the region is or default to US East 1. Uh, we use behavior version latest region load await. So I think I'm just going to take this. This seems to be the most current example of how to do this. And we'll have to import things. And import client from this one. Oh, wait, sorry. That that's that's wrong. We're we're already no no that's right. Uh, save client should be. Let's qualify it as SDK SFN client. There we go. That makes it happy. Let me let me take a look at this though. So. I had a thought there for a moment, but I, I think I lost. So anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, oh, right, right, right. So I was I was thinking, does this... Ah, in their example, they are doing this all in main. It's interesting. Oh, right, right, right. This is this is documentation on the SDK itself, not how to build a Lambda. <laughs> uh, which you would think they would, you know, their example is. Oh, no, no, no. Their example is just here's a here's a command line program rather than uh, of being a Lambda. It'd be nice if they had an example of using the SDK from the Lambda. Like that. Maybe there's one in here. Uh, Rust runtime client for Lambda. Cargo Lambda, Lambda HTTP, Lambda extension, Lambda events. Um, something else I would probably want to to look at pursuing this path. Um, application tracing with uh, AWS X Ray is really nice. So figuring out if we could get that working would be good. But okay, so let's let's build this. Have a, a binary that we can run. What's fun is that, like I think I could just run this executable locally. I mean I'm running this all locally right now anyway, but I mean I would be able to run <laughs> run the um, just run the binary, and then that should expose the HTTP endpoint. That is the kind of the harness interface for Lambda that uh, is being expected. Oh, I see. All right, I I made this a fully qualified um, thing, so I'm not referring to that that import that I did actually. Okay, well that's all done. So let's see about deploying this. So will this detect? The binary for the resource for the lambda has changed. Yep. Uh, let's it again locally okay so if I were to repeat my test of um, offline, where are you offline? It's 
running. If I refresh. Ah, there we go. Okay, cool. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go into the bucket. I'm going to create a new file by uploading something. Uh, just upload the next one. This is not the, the real use case of uploading OTIO files. I just don't want to sit here and upload, um, a few, even if it's, it is to my local system, you know, five gigabyte files over and over again. So this should run the Lambda, uh, and the Lambda should uh, run the step function. So if we go to step functions, I'm curious what this UI looks like. There we go, state machine. Uh, there is an execution that ran just now. So uh, there wasn't an input. The output was hello world. Uh, we we did it. Here are the events. Execution started. And then step function is just a single pass state. Unfortunately, we don't get a, a fancy um, visualization like you get in the actual AWS console. But uh, if we go back to resource browser and go to Lambda, and look at the logs, we'll see that it did all the things. Logs. And we can see here's the recent invocation. We received a Lambda event with our information about the file there. And then we got the response for starting the execution of the step function. Uh, which was just the, you know, uh, the execution arm. So the, the identifier representing that specific um, execution of the step function. Uh, so yeah, that <laughs> that's how you do that. Um, and then from that point, then that step function can do whatever. Start a batch job, um, read a record from DynamoDB, uh, anything, everything, uh, in whatever order we want to do things without really having to write any code. But I am curious about something, which is that in the, um, in the cloud development kit code, you can, um, programmatically define a step function. Like right now we're just passing JSON. So I wonder if there, what, if there is support in the Lumi for programmatically defining state machines. Um, state machine dot. I'm, I'm going to tentatively say doesn't seem that's the case, which is too bad. I really liked the ability to programmatically define step functions as opposed to uh, having them as JSON or YAML. Uh, let's see. Packages. What's in step functions or SFN? This package is based on the AWS Terraform provider. That makes sense. So we have functions and resources, um, and you can do something like this. For that matter, you could have like a separate JSON or YAML file that you then import or parse and then pass to this uh, to make that a little bit more easy to manage, I suppose. Um, I don't imagine the step functions that I will be creating will be overly complicated. And I can still, like in uh, the UI here, I can still leverage the um, the editor here. We have some interesting, uh, really complicated. Oh, look! Preprocess data and train a machine learning model. Here, here's a. Let's just use the template here. But that ends up being <laughs> looking really simple, isn't it? Um, but from this, you can go to code. And you can get the the JSON that defines this this flow, and so you can 
use this tool to design your workflow and then take this and then put it in source control. Um, format it. And then let's config. Okay, that's all that stuff. Cool. Um, I mean, there are definitely use cases where, like, you could be working with the team. You, there, there are cases where you might want to like natively create resources in an ABS like this, but that's not, I don't like doing that. Um, I, I much prefer having uh, code that stands up all that infrastructure for me, right? Okay, so this is part of what I wanted to do today. Uh, and can we do more? I think we can do more. The other thing that I wanted to do with Lambda um, is have something that calls the Twitch API. And um, changes like the stream title and does other things like that. So let's let's do that. Uh, I, th I think something worth noting as I'm looking at this, right? So we're we're just like defining more and more stuff and this you can imagine I could just carry on and add more and more and more stuff into this file you probably don't want to do that um, you can definitely create like group resources together and I think I've seen this in the Plumy docs and it's, it's just you know using the programming language that you have you could create a function or create a class I would probably create a class and make something that looks very similar to what I would do in the CDK, where I would create some kind of higher level construct that wraps together some of the stuff into a bundle and then provides um, uh, exports attributes uh, from it. Um, I wonder what that, let, let's, let's actually, that might be a good thing to do. Rather than trying to build more stuff onto this, which I don't I don't know if half an hour or 20 minutes is enough time to really get that done anyway. Let's look at the Pulumi docs uh, for how one should manage um, putting it all together as we as we get more and more resources. Okay, so that's that. How do we, how do we manage? Um, okay, that's all that. How do we manage, you know, accumulation <laughs> of things? Are there good practices that they, they a show for us to leverage? Or are we just kind of figuring it out? Whatever we want to do. like that probably is not in con probably not in concepts because it is kind of more language specific how that might shape up uh, yeah, for example resources how to use and manage resources could be good um, Component resources, that looks promising. Okay, a component resource is a logical grouping of resources. Components usually instantiate a set of related resources in their constructor, aggregate them as children, and create a larger useful abstraction that encapsulates their implementation details. So that is exactly like a construct in the AWS Cloud Development Kit. Uh, hey, Naho, how's it going? Uh, the games are good. I'm looking forward to uh, doing a bit longer stream tomorrow uh, on the mod of Minecraft, but right now doing some coding stuff. Uh, although lunchtime is, is soon. It's good, just trying to get rid of your cough. Oh no, well, I hope that goes away soon. It is as hard as we, uh, 
coding is the the difficulty in coding is two things one is it's just like a pile of stuff pile on top of other stuff pile on top of other stuff made by other programmers right so it is as hard as we make it but setting aside the details of like oh we made this thing to talk to this thing and then we made a thing to make it easier to talk to this thing but you have to understand how it works and then we made a thing to talk to that thing to talk to that thing to make it easier to use but you have to understand how it works it's putting all that aside you know the fundamental is understanding the ideas of computation there is a thing that rigorously steps through a set of instructions and can't guess what you mean and then the problem solving right i want to get from a to b what are how can i divide that problem into things that a computer can do to get me a little bit closer to the the goal right so i don't know i mean i i think at this point on the first category of like just the piles of stuff that we've built uh there's too much for anyone to understand to know um the problem solving aspect of it is a thing that there's a lot of <laughs> learned behavior and skill that just you build up over time and i've been doing this for a while i started to learn how to program uh in was that 95 96 so <laughs> coming up on 30 years um but there's there's just so much more because we keep on making more things um so like right now i'm learning about how do we do things with pulumi and then trying to apply that to how do i wrap all of these different things that I'm making. I was in uh, sixth grade, still learning two plus three. Uh, so Pulumi is this uh, library and tool that help manage deploying things into different cloud platforms like AWS and uh, Azure and all that. So I can write code that represents um, resources in that platform, right? So I can say there's this idea of like, a bucket to store data in and I can write this line of code that represents the idea of creating that bucket. Out of high school still confused with math? Yeah. Math is is in many ways that that same bucket I think of like building layers on top of layers on top of layers. That the, the only constraint is our ability to understand to add more to it. It is kind of a different kind of thing, a different stack, a different pile of, of complexity, but same sort of idea. Um, so how do I want to kind of abstract this, right? So this all together represents the idea of a file is dropped into an S3 bucket. So I upload a file it triggers a step function and the step function runs. I think probably what I want to do is encapsulate this some way into like a um, step function uh, run on upload. Yeah, that's, that's a great name, isn't it? Uh, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna copy paste this. It's gonna be step function run on upload. I could I could go with a longer name, right? Step function executed when object created in S3 or something. But I think that's enough. Okay, we're gonna need some imports. Uh, is that the right import? That looks like the right import. Yeah. Okay. And then 
probably need to export that class. Default class. There we go. So what's up with PKG index step function run on upload? What does that mean? That says upon creating a new instance of my component, is what this class is called, the call to the base constructor using super base um, registers the component resource instance with Lumi engine. This records the resource state and tracks it across program dependent deployment. So you can see diffs. Uh, component resource must register a unique type name with the base constructor. In the example, the registration is PKG index my component. Um, the package and module name. Right. So this should be something like. In package JSON, we call this GT AWS tests. So it'd be that. And then the module is this. And third is the component name, which is the same name. And then what I want to do can we? Okay, we can register outputs. That's good. Can we add, can we change the type of the resource options here? So what is the type? Okay, cool. So if we want to say interface these args, I probably want to extend this type. Um, and we'll have definition as a string. Okay, seems happy with that. What is the uh, T data here for a component resource? What is that used for? Nothing that I care about. So the constructor here. Oh, inputs. It's inputs. Huh. Inputs. I thought I went out wild for it. Okay, and then I get rid of this. Is that what I'm supposed to do? <laughs> Did I see a link to uh, some additional documentation? Components tutorial. Yeah. So they created a uh, class S3 folder extends component resource. Oh, I see. They just take the bucket name and the path and then ops. Okay. That makes sense. Um, so instead of doing this, I want to have it take the definition. Um, no, no, no. I think I, I'm, I'm going to keep it like this because then if I want to extend this further and add more things, I just have this thing that groups all of the, the inputs to my, my component. And then all I really need to do is I need to take all of this and move it into here. And uh, we get rid of that export and we need to import AWS as well. And so far so good, except this definition moves out and it's just inputs that definition. And then over here, I want to uh, import uh, yeah, that except it's a default. So we, just, we don't need the curly braces. And we say new step function. And the definition is the thing I just cut. Uh, 
Yeah. So this should do exactly the same thing. We probably, in order to make this kind of really reusable, probably need to make other changes here. But if I were to go over here uh, and run Lumi local up, what does it think I need to change, if anything? So this is something, this is the kind of change in it when using the AWS Cloud Development Kit. Um, you would always have constructs, but if you tried to move resources between constructs, it would get really confused. So I'm really curious if this is going to insist deleting and recreating things, or if it's going to all be equivalent. So it thinks it needs to create this. What does that mean? Go over to uh, Lumi updates to the preview. So nine unchanged. So it, it re realizes those resources that are in our um, component. There we go. Yeah, we can see that here as well. It realizes those aren't changed. It's just registering the existence of GTA AWS tests. So by doing it this way, then I can create other components and I keep them all organized and not have one big file that has all the different things I want to deploy into AWS. So that's good. That is like, um, I'm not going to use this tool if I can't do that sort of thing. Um, okay. Yeah. So doing this shouldn't change anything. And, uh, I think we're just about out of time for today. So before we go, I'm going to do three things. One thing I want to do is I want to do destroy. I'm going to destroy the managed stack from Palumi's perspective. And then we'll tear down AWS local. Just like wipe it all out. Uh, which is fine because we have code that defines exactly how to stand up our infrastructure. So why not just uh, destroy it and recreate it? What will be interesting is when we're talking about managing things like S3 buckets where there's data in them and yeah, like that. Uh, good. So it can't delete that bucket because it's not empty. Um, but that's fine because I can just destroy. Is it down? Is it local stack down? No. Um, we start stop. Yeah. Um, That'll have to be good enough. I think when I come back to this, I will need to run after I do local stack up or start or whatever it is. And I do, um, I'll need to do Pulumi local refresh like we did earlier for it to realize that all this, all the stuff is gone. Um, but yeah, this is, this is looking promising. I think there's still some things that I'm not ha happy about specifically around like the definition of these lambdas i will want to use um docker images and i don't want to have to like have this vary um in the short term unless i can find a a, a good rationale to spend over 400 dollars for local stack pro and I think Brainless said something about Local Stack Pro that I, I didn't fully read. Um, oh, yeah, 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 way back. He said, I asked about getting Pro in our company because we said, well, SNS is us things in S3, which we use for internal site. Wasn't, wasn't a good outcome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm gonna be paying for AWS anyway. And for all this stuff this is super cheap. It doesn't cost anything for the bucket to exist, uh, for step functions and Lambda functions to exist. It's just the invocation. And the thing is, 
in until and unless this becomes an actual product gloaming telegram becomes like an actual product that i have like users uh customers um the cost is going to be basically nothing right um just because yeah i'm streaming not, what nine hours a week that's nine hours of video it's just not a lot it doesn't take that long to process all that stuff even if i were to do a lot more than what i'm doing today in terms of processing or video it's it's a drop in the bucket um and it will free up my computer from having all the stuff running locally okay so uh, i said three things two of those things were tearing down stuff the third thing is you gotta go find someone's a raid